Ukraine has for the first time used a mother drone with artificial intelligence in the war with Russia. Having a range of 300 kilometers in the front, the drone is equipped with navigation that works without GPS Ukraine's Minister of Digital Transformation Mikhail Fedorov has shared a video of combat use of the drone. The device is capable of delivering two FPV attack drones up to 300 kilometers away, where they autonomously intercept and destroy targets ranging from enemy aircraft and air defense systems to critical infrastructure facilities. At a distance of up to 100 kilometers, the drone carrier can return for reuse. The cost of one combat mission is about $10,000, which is hundreds of times cheaper than a rocket launch. The drone is unique in a way that it doesn't use GPS. The smart pilot system uses visual inertial navigation, navigating with the help of cameras. Artificial intelligence not only controls the drone's flight, but also independently recognizes and selects targets. Most of the Russian elite would be happy if Putin stopped the war on the terms proposed by Trump and first accepted the offer of a ceasefire. Igor Eidemann, a Russian sociologist, oppositionist and political emigrant, writes about this. Stopping the war on Trump's terms would be an ideal option for Putin's Russia, for the regime and the oligarchy, to finally end the war, secure the profit and jump out of the catastrophic adventure. They are also ready to oppose Putin. Trump gave them a chance not just to get out of this hole, but also with a profit in the form of temporarily captured territories. However, crazy Putin does not want to take advantage of this chance, the good fortune that fell on his head in the form of Trump. He's going to fight until he completely defeats Ukraine. He wants to dominate not only the territory of the former USSR, but also the entire zone of Soviet influence. This goal is unattainable and leads to a major European war, but the paranoid cannot stop. However, most of the Russian elite don't need all this imperial nonsense. They are used to a comfortable life in the small world of the super-rich, for whom there are no borders or restrictions. They want to continue earning in Russia and spend and invest, get treatment and vacation, teach their children and essentially live a second real life in the West. They are very tired of the permanent stress associated with war and sanctions, he said. When a dictator's policies conflict with the interests of the ruling elite, the likelihood of a coup increases sharply. However, this is a long way off. They fear Putin more than a nuclear war. However, something may be starting to change. I heard a rumor from Moscow that they are trying to persuade Putin to agree to a truce. Abramovich, Dmitriev and even Shoigu are allegedly involved. In confirmation of this, Telegram channels write about some unexpected suspicious activity by Shoigu, who meets with Abramovich and other oligarchs. If this is true, it is already a step forward. Of course, Putin will send them away and may punish them. Maybe then they will overcome their panic fear of him, as did the entourage of Paul I or Beria's friends, he added. In Stavropol, a veteran of the war in Ukraine, Zor Gertsev, who was responsible for the Mariupol bombing, died in an explosion. After returning from the front, he became a participant in the Time of Heroes program and the first deputy head of the city administration. This was reported by the governor of Stavropol Krai, Vladimir Vladimirov. The governor wrote that Gertsev died as a result of a nighttime incident on Chekhov Street, without specifying what kind of incident it was. He added that law enforcement agencies and special services were working at the scene. All versions are being considered, including the organization of a terrorist attack involving Nazis from Ukraine, he said. 
as reported by media Gertsiev led the air unit of the operation to capture Mariupol. In particular, he implemented his developments in the technology of targeting missiles, which allowed them to significantly increase their accuracy and efficiency, including hitting the supply base of Azov. According to Russian media, they could have used a suicide bomber, 29-year-old Nikita Penkov, to blow up Zor Gertsiev. It is reported that at the beginning of May, Penkov rented an apartment in a high-rise building on Chekhov Street, near which an explosion thundered. Gertsev allegedly came to the house himself, but it is not yet known for what reason and how closely he was acquainted with Penkov. It is assumed that the explosive device was located on Penkov itself. According to one of the versions, he could not have known that the explosive detonated, it could have been set off remotely. Earlier it was reported that a grenade was used for the murder. The power of the SVU, which blew up the deputy head of Stavropol, Zor Gertsev, is about 300 grams in TNT equivalent. Immediately after the explosion, the official lived for almost five minutes, after which he died. In the first seconds, he tried to crawl away from the scene of the tragedy. SVU was in the bag of Nikita Penkova. The device was painless, so there were no debris left after the explosion. Penkov was aware that he had an SVU and himself brought it into action. This is also confirmed by the fact that before the explosion he came as close as possible to Gertsy from the left side, where he had a bag. Stavropol Mayor Ivan Ulyanchenko reported earlier that, there was a bang, near a residential building on 8519 Chekhov Street and two men were killed. Telegram channels Mash and Shot wrote that a grenade was presumably detonated. Several cars were damaged in the explosion. Gertsev, 34, became a participant in the presidential personnel program, Time of Heroes, in May 2024. The program's website reports that he led the airborne part of the Russian troops' operation to capture Mariupol, and also received several awards, one of them, for Avdiivka, in the Donetsk region, where fighting took place. In September of the same year, Gertsev was appointed first deputy head of the city of Stavropol. Thank you.